Hello and welcome. Today we're working on calculating compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, C-A-G-R, in Excel. We've got five examples, so let's get started. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills like calculating interest rates and compound and annual growth rates. So let's have our first simple example. I'm going to make the point that total return and average return are not as good as calculating the compounded annual growth rate, CAGR. So let's have a little simple example. I just made up some numbers. Let's say we started with an account with $1,000. It went up and down over the five years, and then it ended at $1,600. So one thing I want to do is let's calculate the annual return. So if you want to calculate the annual return, it's basically simple interest. So let's take the ending balance. So the ending balance 900 divided by, I'm sorry, subtracted, subtract the beginning balance. And that would give us, we have a $100 loss divided by the original beginning balance. So we have a 10% loss. We can see how that works. We have a 10% loss. And then let's copy that all the way down and let's calculate the returns for each year. So in year two, we have a 22% return. Year three, 27% return. Year four, we've lost 14%. And then year five, we made 33%. One of the challenges is how do we describe our rate of return in a single number? Well, sometimes you'll see total return. And the good thing about total return, it includes compounding. Average return does not. And so we'll show you why that's not really a good way to do it. Let's do average return first. We'll take the ending balance. So the ending balance is 1600 and we'll divide by the beginning balance, 1000 and then we'll just simply subtract one, which takes out that original investment. So we have a total return of 60%. We can see we went from 1000 to 1600 which is a 60% increase. All right, so that's fine. The problem is, well, is this for five years or 10 years or 14 years or three years? It makes a difference what your your annual return would be. So what some people do is they say, well, I know how to do an average. So you can just add these five up, divided by five, and that's my average. I'll just say that's my return. That's not really the proper way to do it because it doesn't account for um, compound interest that these are linked. These are in order. So you lost 10% first, then you made 22% on top of that, and so on. So I'm going to use the average function in Excel just to make it really easy. Average of all these. And so you say, oh, I have 11.7% return. Well, that's not really the way you calculate it. We can't use that number to then calculate what our return uh, has been or what our growth uh, on the account has been. So let's do compound and annual growth rate. Now, this includes uh, compound interest, assumes compound interest here. So it's a little bit different calculation. And it's going to be the one number, the one rate that connects the 1,000 all the way to the 1,600. It's almost like the ones in the middle do not exist. So here's our formula. And I'll show you how to do Excel functions here on the next couple of uh, problems. But let's start with our basic formula. We're going to take our ending balance which is 1600. We're going to divide by the beginning balance, which is 1000. And then instead of dividing by three, uh, by five rather, we're going to take the um, exponent. We're going to, to the power of one divided by five. So we're going to use the caret symbol, which is that symbol, which is above the six. So you shift six, would that be the caret? And so that means to the power of one divided by five. It's a five year return. So we're going to do to the exponent one fifth. And then we'll subtract out the one to take out that original investment. So here is the proper way to show this return. You would say, I have a five year return of 9.86%. 9.86%. Now, let's prove it. If we plugged in uh, the future value formula, plugged in the present value and the rate of return and the number of periods, Let's do this. So if we say our present value is 1,000, and then we're going to multiply that times 1 plus, and we'll put, um, I'm going to point to the 0.986. Click 
close parentheses, and then I need to do it to the power of five years. What should it equal? 1,000 will grow to 1,600 over the five years. So this is the single rate that shows the growth from 1,000 all the way to 1,600. Now, let me show you this real quickly. What if we took out these middle numbers? We don't even know the middle numbers. Well, you can't even calculate the average return. Average return is not able to be calculated if you don't have those annual returns. Now, total return still is uh, able to be calculated and compound annual growth rate is still be able to ca be calculated. So let me put those back. So let's make a couple of notes before we work on our um, next couple of problems. The average return is gonna be higher than the true annualized return CAGR. Uh, CAGR, CAGR, is the appropriate way to show the annual returns. It's the single rate that explains the growth from the 1,000 up to the 1,600. So that's the way you calculate it. You can easily calculate it with a formula. However, we know that Excel has built-in functions that are going to be uh, easier to use probably. And so let me show you a couple different ways to do this. I went and looked and found the Vanguard 500 Index Investor Fund. F-V-I-N-X is the symbol. I found the actual returns for the years 2011 through 2020. So let's calculate the total return, the average return, and I'm gonna give you three different ways to calculate the CAGR. So the way that I wanna work this is, let's pretend we started with $10,000. So we're gonna take $10,000 times one plus the interest rate for that year so you can see the 10,000 would grow at 1.97%. So it grew almost $200, $197. And we're gonna copy this all the way down. And we'll say, hey, this 10,000 over 10 years grew to $36,194. So what's our total return? Now, one thing I'm gonna show is the formula here to the right using a function called formula text. Formula text, easy to do. So let me show you how to do the total return. Remember the total return is going to be the ending amount, 36,000, divided by the beginning amount, 10,000, and we'll subtract out one to take out the original investment. So the total return is 261, it's almost 262%. So that is our total return. Now the average return, remember we're not gonna really uh, show you this, but I'm gonna show you how it works. Just so you'll know, we'll take the average returns, of all, all the returns, and average that number, and you get 14.33%. Now we know that's a little too high, so when we calculate the compound annual growth rate, the CAGR, it's gonna be a, the number that, that links that 10,000 to 36,000. All right, so let's do our formula that we learned just a minute ago. Start with the ending balance divided by the beginning balance. And we need to do this to the power of one divided by 10. Why 10? Well, this is a 10 year um, return, so we're gonna divide by 10. And then we'll subtract out one. So our answer is 13.73. That's the real number, 13.73. Now let me show you two other ways to do this. Now, I'm gonna use rate because I'm gonna use that for my next problems. Rate can handle different cash flows, so I think it's the superior method. If this is all you have, then, then the next one, RRI, works completely fine. But if you have a more complex problem, then rate is gonna be uh, the one we're gonna use, and I, we'll do this uh, in the next couple of problems. So we're gonna do rate. I'm gonna pull up my, my formula builder by hitting the FX up here, and I'm gonna look for rate. And so what do I need? I need the number of periods. Number of periods is 10. There's no payments going on. We uh, assume a $10,000 original investment. So our present value, now here's one little catch. We need to make present value negative because we're gonna assume, hey, this is a cash outflow. We'll talk about this in just a minute. And we'll assume future value, 36,000, is a positive number. That's a cash inflow. And so um, there's no payments. So here we're gonna do the type, just put zero in the type and we're not gonna guess. And so we get 13.73, that is our compounded annual growth rate. That's CAGR. 
The last one is the RRI, which is the uh, the rate of return. So let's do that one real quickly. It has uh, fewer things, so let me just type it in RRI. So it needs the number of periods. I'm going to type in 10. The present value, I don't need to make a negative because it's a simple little problem here. Present value is 10,000. My future value is 36,000. So we should get the same answer. 13.73. You see the formulas I did on the side here. All right, a couple more problems. And I think we're going a little bit faster because now we know uh, how this works. So let's do a problem. Before we had a problem where we had the rates of return. Now let's do a problem that, that might be more realis realistic. You say, look, I started with 10,000 and it's grown to 177,000. I made no additional investments. I didn't withdraw anything. What's my annual rate of return? What's my CAGR? Well, so let's figure out. We have periods is eight. We're trying to figure out the rate. The present value, I'm going to make it a negative 100,000. We started with 100,000. Why do I make it negative? It's a cash outflow. I'm paying 100,000 to receive in the future 177,000. Now, my payment is going to be zero. There's no payments going in or out of the account. My next two will be what if we have uh, payments adding to the account? What if we have payments withdrawing from the account? So this is a complete solution for you using the rate function. So the rate function, let's go back to our rate function. We're going to say the number of periods is eight. The payment, I'm going to point to the zero. The present value, remember we make it negative because it's an outflow. Um, it's already negative, so I've already um, solved that. So it's going to be a negative 100,000. The future value is 177. And the payments, no payments, I'm going to put a zero. So what happens? If you had an account that started with 100,000 and it grew to 177,000 in eight years, then you received a 7.4% compounded annual growth rate. So I think the rate function is superior, and I'm going to show you why, doing the last two problems, number four and number five. Number four, by the way, here's the, um, our function. I'm using the formula text just to show how I built this formula. So you can see it. You can stop the video and check my work. Number four, an account started with a balance of 3000 You made annual investments of 6000 Okay, so let's do this. 30 years. So this is somebody maybe getting started investing, and they say, look, I've got 3000 in an account right now, and I'm going to make this negative 3000 just so we can see uh, how the math works. And I'm also going to start putting in maybe $500 a month, which is $6,000 for the year, $6,000. And it grew to $890,000, okay, in 30 years. Does that seem crazy? Well, let's see if the, the rate seems appropriate, okay? So we're going to calculate the same uh, rate. We're going to do the number of periods, we'll point to the 30, the payment. We know is a negative $6,000. It's already negative, so I don't have to put a negative in front of that. The present value is a negative 3000 The future value is 890000 The payments happen at the end of the period. So zero, and we'll do done. All right, so the interest rate you've received over that 30 years is 9.19%. That's your CAGR, compounded annual growth rate, for the 30-year period. All right, fantastic. So a little bit of investment over a long period of time can really grow to large, large numbers. Last problem here, number five, let's say we started with an account with 750000 So our future value is 700, I'm sorry, the uh, present value is 750000 So we put in 750000 The annual withdrawals were 60000 Now, to this, uh, this 60000 is going to be a positive inflow to us. This is why we're investing, to withdraw 60000 And after 10 years, we still have 850000 So the account started with 750, make that negative. We're going to pull out 60000 So to our, um, our account goes down, but, but to, our, um, to us, that's a cash inflow. And the future value is a cash inflow. After 10 years, what is the compounded annual growth rate? Well, I'm going to do it instead of using the formula builder. I'm just going to do rate. 
and it'll tell me what I need. The number of periods is 10. The payment is going to be uh, the 60,000. The present value is going to be the 750,000. And the future value is 850,000. And then it says, hey, payments at the end of the period. We're going to assume, yes, the payments are at the end of the period. And we're not going to make an estimate. So our compounded annual growth rate is 8.88%. All right, hope this is helpful for you. Calculating compounding annual growth rate is important. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. And we'll see you in the future videos. Thank you very much.